do I have a lot to talk about this week, which is unfortunate that it's the last uh, weekly report before summertime, uh, because some of you might already be off on your beaches and private yachts enjoying the summertime, which I hope you are, and then you can always catch up on all the news later. But yeah, legislative session, as you may know, has adjourned, or I forget what the, what's that Latin word, sin vi, sini, viti, vini, vini, vici, and now we have all these bills on the table. But the one, of course, that I'm most interested in is HB 3399. So let's talk about that aftermath. If you didn't watch it live, please, I'll include the link. It's totally worth going and watching all the House representatives discuss the bills, get clarifications, ask good questions, give points on both sides. It looks something like this. We're not taught to be good citizens as our forefathers demanded. We are taught to be global citizens. I was talking about fuzzy math earlier and it took me a while to figure out where it was in the bill and just for everybody's own education purposes. It's on page nine when it talks about at a minimum of subject matter standards for mathematics shall require the mastery of standard log uh, algorithms and mathematics, logical, efficient way of solving problems, constantly works, and students to attain fluency in Euclidean geometry. Guys, I got a chemistry degree and I had to look up Euclidean geometry. Euclidean geometry is X plus Y equals this. Non-Euclidean is what we need for Einstein Rosenthal's or Rosenstein's uh, bridge. I have no idea why we're te teaching people about black holes. Please vote yes on this and let's get black holes out of our education. We're told, well, aren't you for higher standards? Well, who isn't? But we want standards that reflect Oklahoma values. I hate to burst your bubble, but this is not some federal government conspiracy. Now you're pulling the rug out from under them and telling them, nope, we're gonna go back to the old standards. Forget about all that money and time that you put into this. We all know that you can't put a dollar amount on our children, but if you wanna talk about dollars, many institutes from the Pioneer Institute, the Fordham Institute, the Heritage Foundation have all co come up uh, with astronomical costs for what Common Core is going to uh, cost for the taxpayers. I would like to just burst um, Emily Virgin's uh, bubble because back in November the 1st, 1992, uh, there was a letter written by a man by the name of Mark Tucker who wrote a letter to Hillary Clinton. And excuse me for bringing up your name. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Okay, Norman, wherever. I don't know the right answer. But guess what? You don't know the right answer either. 33.99 is, as another gentleman used it here today, convoluted. It reminds me of a dragon that's on steroids, and he's been irradiated for about three or four months. There's legs and arms and heads everywhere, and stuff coming out of his head, and oh my gosh, warts and bumps, and whew, what does this thing look like? I don't know, and let me tell you something else you don't know about that. Vote the first time was 80 to 12, not to do Common Core. Guess who was one of the 12 voting no? Yeah, me. And I said some of the same things that you guys are saying that want to vote yes. I said those things in a debate. We ask you not to do this. We ask you not to do this. And by golly, we got enough politics going on, we got her done. We passed this beautiful thing. And we spent a lot of money. And the schools in my area tried to make this thing work because 101 of the smartest people in the world, the people who think they're smarter than anyone out there because we're going to tell them how to run their schools from right here, passed it. And so my folks at home tried to make it work. And they're doing a pretty good job of making it work. Well, let's just keep our kids here in Oklahoma, right here in Oklahoma. Uh, there's some more world out there, people. There's some more world out here. Don't be afraid of the rest of the world. We live in a world economy. We live in a world, the whole world, and it goes past Guyman and Liberal. It goes all the way to Denver sometimes. You might even make it to Little Rock, Arkansas. Get excited about the fact that you're mandating how your teachers teach. And those of us who have been teachers, the less mandate you have, the better off you are. The good teachers teach. The sorry ones won't. You can't write enough rules to make it happen. Members, I don't know if you remember the older Spider-Man, not the recent one, but the older one. There's a scene in it where um, 
one of the bad guys has a situation where Spider-Man either has to save his girlfriend or save the trolley, but he can't do both, and so he could lose either. So he's in a real predicament because either choice seems to be bad. And I would contend that we're in that same choice, and I don't know how many of you all would say that this is a cluster and we've been put in a position that's unwinnable right now. This could have been worked out. My trust level is at an all-time low. I'm going to vote yes because I'm cutting my ties with Common Core. But I'm not voting yes because anybody in the gallery has asked me to because I don't trust them. I'm frustrated that education in this state has become politicized. It's not supposed to be. Spider-Man. So that was just a little preview, but I implore you, go watch the whole thing and learn, judge from yourself. It was, to say the least, interesting to me. Uh, and I guess let's talk about a couple of things in the aftermath, some of the questions I get the most. Uh, if signed, which I guess we'll find out sometime this week, maybe by the time this message goes out, if signed, we will revert back to past academics, or I'm sorry, subject matter standards for the next two years while developing new standards. Of course, we're going to do that in conjunction with a lot of education stakeholders, including higher ed and career tech, but also a lot of teachers. So I'll need a lot of your help to come on board and help develop those. And of course, I want strong teachers who are going to be willing to defend these standards should we have to go through this process. Defend it not just to legislatures and the Senate, let them know that these are high quality standards, but also defend them to all the cynics and bloggers out there. And uh, so that is something to look forward to. Oh, and it will, we also will be not only aligning our curriculum and teaching practices for the next two years to pass, but as the bill reads, also the assessments will revert back to pass alignment. So that might raise some questions. On the other hand, if it's not passed, then we move forward with implementation of the Common Core for ELA and we will continue to develop and get information and blueprints out uh, I think fairly quickly for the upcoming assessments um, because I think that's all on hold right now until we determine or well, until governor determines whether this bill is going to be signed or vetoed. So that is something to look forward to by the end of this week and of course you know I'll be on Twitter and blogging and Facebook to hopefully try and keep you not in the dark. Let's just get a couple of things clarified. I know people like to throw out the Fordham Institute a lot, but the Fordham Institute supports the move to Common Core, just to clarify. They, already even, they even put out like a, a release, a press release uh, about that. You can find that on the webpage linked right here. And they say that the standards aren't that different, yet they also said the standards are rated more rigorous in the Common Core than in PASS. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, one of the things that was brought up a bit was the suggested reading list or required reading list, the language keeps changing on that, of Appendix B. It says very explicitly on page 2, the last sentence in the first paragraph, they expressly do not represent a partial or complete reading list. Not a requirement. Not a required reading list. But speaking of getting out of the dark, because that was a comment that was thrown to me by someone I respect very much on the Oklahoma Ed Twitter chats. You know, it's unfortunate that teachers are going to be left in the dark with legislative session, you know, making all these determinations for us while some of them are already left for summer. Well, that would be unfortunate to be left in the dark and it doesn't have to be that way. So please, I implore you, if you're getting this message, obviously you're not left in the dark. You're doing what you can to be out and connecting and keeping up to date with everything that's happening. Please invite a friend to Twitter, invite a friend to the ELA OK Facebook group. A lot of good conversations right now as we get test scores back in. A lot of good uh, collaborating and sharing in that group. 
invite a friend to join with you. If you're not part of the Facebook group, join yourself. And summer convening notifications are gonna go out this week. I'm still reviewing all applications just because I want a good balance of teachers from as many parts of Oklahoma as possible and equal representation in as many grades as possible to be part of that convening. But can't wait to the, we have new stuff coming out to support teachers for the next school year through that summer convening, which will be the second week in June. If you're looking for other PD opportunities, NIMSY's doing a workshop in Edmond the first week in June. I think it's like Tuesday through Friday that first week in June, but you can all look on the community calendar for that. Uh, as far as just PD that's in your control, remember the Read Club. Obstacle is away. I finished it this weekend. Still got a week to finish it if you're on board with it and want to read. And then I'm going to start posting in the forum on the website down at the bottom my three takeaways. I might use Evernote to publish it out, but my three takeaways and practical classroom applications that I picked up from reading this book. Based on the survey of people that signed up, the most popular book that other people want to read next is Teach Like a Pirate. Arr. I prefer ninjas, but you know, pirates, you know, maybe they're at least in my top five. So I'm excited to read it. And if you would like to read it, pick it up. I, I prefer Kindle personally because then you can always like highlight passages and then tweet it out and attach the ELA OK hashtag so you can see what other people think in the ELA OK community is a significant quote and even comment on that. So that's what I've been doing. But if you're more of the traditionalist and you like just marking up and getting intimate with that paper, then that's fine too. It's Teach Like a Pirate by Dave Burgess. And if you happen to be in the neighborhood, I think I can scrounge up three copies that we have laying around the office and might be able to sneak them to you. So if you want to come say hi, remember I'm on the third floor, let me know and I'll uh, try to put a copy aside for you. But I only have like, I, like three of them. I think they were given to us and so let me know if you'd be interested in a free copy. It just requires you to come and visit me. So other than that, I think this has been long enough. You got summer to enjoy. Maybe you're connecting with me. I would look forward to it. Hey, let's meet for coffee sometime and solve all the world's problems. Instead of my regular sign off, I want you to be inspired by OCT, Oklahoma Council of Teachers of English, OCTE President, Jason Stevenson's awesome year in review of all the books his students read at Deer Creek High School. So prepare to be inspired by this closing video and I thank you for joining me for another year of the ELA OK Weekly Report. Stay in touch, take care of yourself, and get some rest. See you later.